Hi, my name is Matt Gould, and for the past 40 plus years, I have been a multidisciplinary artist. I've drawn, painted, illustrated, designed, theater directed, play written, not that that's necessarily a verb, and I have also for the last 20 some years focused on textile arts. And I've lived in Red Deer for the last 17 years. In January of 2019, as the election in Alberta was heating up, I found myself very, very alarmed at the UCP government's platform and the people they were running. So I decided I was going to get out of my house and I was actually going to become involved. So I volunteered for my local riding in Red Deer, the NDP South. And So after the election night, I, like many Albertans, were shocked and devastated at the fact that the UCP government got in. And I found myself in the, the few days after the election going to the grocery store and unable to look my fellow Albertans in the eyes. Because to be honest, I was furious and really, really upset, even though I guess being an Albertan myself essentially most of my life, I shouldn't have been surprised, but I really was. So in the past number of months, since they became the government and they keep unrolling all of these, I find very offensive and aggressive and very condescending kinds of programs and policies, I began to feel as an artist, how do I become activated now so I can maybe channel some of this emotion, some of this anger and an opportunity came up in January of 2020. There was a local group and they were getting ready to do a protest against the UCP cuts and against the government in general. And I said, wait a sec, I've been thinking about puppets for a long time. Why don't we do a puppet show that we can use to start this rally? So I talked to the organizers. The organizers say, yeah, okay, um, sure, let's give it a hurl. So I snuck away to my studio and I created these wacky cardboard puppets and I wrote this script and we presented it in this rally of 150 or so people in front of the city hall at Red Deer in the end of February, I think it was, cold and blowy. Well, I tell you, the second those puppets showed up and the second we introduced the characters through the puppets, the audience went crazy. They responded so unbelievably emotionally to everything we were saying. And they were yelling and swearing back at the puppets like you do, let's say, in a Punch and Judy show. They were really responding. So my puppeteers and I were looking at each other going, oh my God, what have we done? Super excited and super thrilled at the response that we got. The success of our puppet show at the political rally got me really fired up. So I came home and I, I knew that something had happened, something profound and engaging and exciting. So I put a call out for people, like-minded people, to help me start, in a more official capacity, the Red Deer Puppetry Collective. I was the artistic director for 10 years. I wrote a number of plays. And in a sense, going back to puppets, I used puppets quite a bit in some of the productions because I've always had a fascination with them. I think it's because they get to create an alter ego or a personality. We can pour ourselves into this thing on our hand or this thing on strings or on a stick. So I said, okay, I'd love to see if there are other folks in the community that might be interested in playing with puppets come together for this loose thing. I put a notice out on Facebook. I connected with some students that I had at Red Deer College. People are lining up to help uh, as performers. 
doing some sewing, some painting, some pulling together, because it feels like a collective. The idea of that word is a collaboration, um, a pulling together of people to create this bigger product. And we're planning to, at this point, create a series of short films that we're using to poke fun at and parody, if you will, the powers that be, respond to our feelings about it. And we really think it's important to comment, to make some noise and to point some things out so that people can respond to it, um, reflect upon it and react just like we're doing. I've been looking at the puppets of an artist, Paul Clay, and he made a bunch of puppets, 75 of them or something, for his son. And they were like fantastically raw. He was one of the artists in the Bauhaus in the 1920s, uh, for those of you who don't know who he was. And he created these fantastic puppets with these abstract heads and these raw kind of shaped bodies. Again, a very simple glove puppet. So that's kind of one of the ways that I was inspired and that was in a sense an aesthetic jumping off point. So this is what I've been using as the head for all of these particular puppets and I think partially you know people have looked at them and they said oh are you doing this because you think they're blockheads? So part of me is going oh yeah uh, I just had a whole bunch of these funky little boxes that I then said they make a perfect shape and I can turn them into the heads this way. So I take this white plaster and you cut it into strips or into squares or into shapes and dip it in water and then you wrap it around and then it dries. So you're able to mold it, paint it. I put ears on it. I'll put a, a piece of wrapped up newspaper with tape on it and that makes the nose. So uh, it was really fun to model these in a really kind of let's say abstract way and a very loose way and a very primitive sort of way. Puppets have been used for centuries to respond to the world, to make political statements, to criticize, to point out the foibles and the foils of society and the mess that we're in. Um, they've been, you, you know, in the modern news, those giant effigies that are in town squares of presidents and of leaders that are burnt and the whole crowd goes kind of crazy. I read about this small theater company in Syria during the Civil War, and they were a puppet theater company, and by company I mean they throw their puppets in this car drive to this small town the word would get out people would come and they'd watch the puppet show and then they'd have to skedaddle throw the puppets back into the car disappear into the night because for them you know it was really really dangerous this was a life and death situation and they were criticizing the government criticizing the power that the government had and representing it in, in parody and in satire. So it was a, a really powerful statement they made, and it was a long line of, let's say, this great history of puppets as political and social commentary. This figure, the Minister of Education, based on Adriana Lagrange, is taking her devout Catholicism because she really presents herself as a very strongly religious person. I base this character on our Mother of Guadalupe, which is a Madonna in Central America. And if you take a look at the crown, the crown is uh, also from a Santos. It's a kind of a, a Latin American carved figure. And I've made this out of wool felt, and these little tin shapes are milagros. And milagro is an image, a variety of images that are 
principally in Mexico, where you might find, let's say, an image of a cow or a truck or a body part, and you will buy one of these and then you will look at this body part and you'll pray for cancer to go away, you'll pray for a good crop, you'll pray for your family. So they become these little tiny prayer motifs, if you will, that people pray to. I've given her quite a severe look, so she's super strong. I find her kind of scary, <laughs> to be honest. And on the back, she's no superhero, but again, going back to the religious feeling, I've got Adriana Lagrange and Jesus Christ forever. And the question is, yes, no, maybe so. So she is kind of uh, giving you all that you want. <laughs> This is a very contentious minister, and this is um, Mi Minister Shandro, who's the Minister of Health. And as I was working on the character, I said, okay, uh, how can I best respond to what he's doing? And as a, an undoctor doctor and fighting with doctors, I've put him in surgical scrubs. So he's got this apron, it's covered with blood. He's got hands that are blood covered as if he's just come from the operating room. I made him quite visceral. And yet, uh, as you might be able to see, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but right close here and up on his mask, I've got this really funky red paint that has glitter in it. So I'm hoping that these lights will pick it up and gives it just kind of a bit of showbiz pizzazz, right? Because he's kind of a, a noisy, showy sort of kind of a guy in a sense. So he's got the mask and he's just coming from surgery. We can take the mask off and you'll see his, you know, lovely nose. Is he Pinocchio? If I turn him to the side, will you see that? Is he Pinocchio? So he's lying all the time and the nose gets bigger. Who knows, right? And then up goes the mask. So I've given him a very strong, you know, uh, medical presence. And he gets to respond to the world and he gets to go to a doctor's house and bang on the door and yell at the doctor, whatever it is. So um, this was um, Minister Shandro. This is Jason Kenny. Because he wears this badge of piousness and faith, I'm going to turn him into the Pope. So I began to look at, because of course, as the symbolic head, if you will, of the province, maybe therefore the head of the church, if you will, right? There's that, that um, correlation, I think. I dressed him up and looked at, so I, I went online. This is the great thing about Google. I'm online and I'm looking at different papal clothing and outfits and different kinds of garb with this sort of very fancy um, stitch that goes on the collar. Now you'll notice too that I've left all of the threads. I didn't cut them. So what I'm saying is, okay, you've got this sense of you're presenting such a perfect face to the world and your ideas are so smooth and so slick. And yet, you know what, if we get close, guess what? all these little threads can be unraveling and there's kind of a, a messiness to it. So that was going through my mind as I didn't bother trimming it. And again, we get back to the cross. So of course he has to wear one. And these milagros again came up. So there I've got the foot crushing the heart of my province where I grew up. And then we've got the hammer so that he's not subtle about any of his work. He's taking this stick and he's just hitting us over the head over and over again. So I've given him really lovely, strong, um, gorgeous colors because I wanted to give him a ceremonial appeal. And there's sort of the papal hat and um, black gloves, okay? Because black gloves then for me have a sense of this action is kind of nefarious. It's kind of evil. And then we turn it around and he has a lovely papal train. 
So you'll see things like the oil, the oil rig right there, the cattle, the cows, the industry. Again, giving it a little bit of a sense of beauty because I wanted to make this puppet kind of elegant. But at the same time, he just decides, I know what I'm going to do. And I know who you are. So uh, another really happy thing is these puppets, as you're holding them, you can, you know, you begin to sort of cock the head. Oh, there's a shock. He rubs his hands together. He gets... And there's a real Punch and Judy-ish feel to these puppets. They were partly one of the things that inspired me was kind of playing with that crudeness and yet uh, elegance, I think, on a certain level. I guess I shouldn't be calling my work elegant, but there you go. So one of the exciting things for me was the idea of moving into film with the Red Deer Puppetry Collective, because it goes back to all of the formal education that I have. So I studied radio and television arts at Ryerson University in Toronto and classical 2D animation like a thousand years ago in Sheridan College in Oakville. And I went to the Vancouver Film School. So in a funny way, it's like I'm coming home to my original impulses when I was a, a teenager in junior high and high school saying I want to move into film and I want to be an animator and I want to be a storyteller in this larger sense. When I was in film school, a film was a piece of something. It, I, we had a physical relationship with it. So there's the clip of me talking away and then you cut it and you stick it up and you could look at that clip and say, okay, it's this long. And the same thing with sound, because sound was on a magnetic tape. So again, when I was using it, there was a real crafted connection to what it is you were doing as a filmmaker, because you had this clothesline of sound bites and of images, and then you're putting it together, and then you're splicing on this little thing with some tape and all that sort of stuff. So um, moving now into the world of the digital, feels like a real challenge for me to develop a comfort with there it is in the computer and there they all are these little bits and they're very abstract and then I think well I could lose these clips or where do they go and how do you hold them together and files and folders the first production of the Red Deer Puppetry Collective is a short film entitled Back country boy. It takes place in the imaginary dominion of Albertica and a very important chief administrator of outdoor domains and recreational grounds, Nason Jixon. He and his family kick back and enjoy the great outdoors with his RV, quad, satellite dish, motorboat, blah blah blah. And we're looking at um, Jedediah, the son that I, that I created. And we've given him a strong personality because I put that cheeky uh, earring in his ear, of course, and the, the puka shells, the surfer dude kind of puka shells around his neck. So he's got a very strong personality, and it was really fun working with him. And he's got the plaid shirt because, of course, he's a, a country boy and... I've given him the odd name of Jedediah. You know, there's a real strong evangelical Christian kind of a theme that moves through the UCP government and lots of its ministers, and um, Jason Nixon is one of them. And his daughter, I've made up again, Clementine. So Clementine is kind of a rebel and she's an earth mother type and a real um, environmentalist if you will she's all about helping the animals and that's part of her goal This 
is the backcountry boy himself, Mr. Nason Jixon, in his stunning Mr. Big and Tall Stephen Harper Mix and Match Collection suit. Ready to rock the natural and unnatural world. So if I were to look down the road, let's say over the next number of months or a year or so at the Red Deer Puppetry Collective and get a sense of what it is I want to do, I go back to my love of telling story, my love of a slightly wry sense of humor, the fact that as a visual artist as well as a writer and as a director, I can use my hands to create things. I can get other people or work with other people who like to use their hands to create things. Therefore, the puppets can become maybe more elaborate, maybe more detailed. Maybe we can focus on filmmaking and the production involved with that, along with live streaming, let's say. And then let's also include live performances, because if I take it back to that presentation at that rally again in January or February, the physical, visceral response of that live audience and us as performers was like electric. So if there are ways that the Red Deer Puppetry Collective can begin to thrive in these different media, it would be like fantastic. And I've also been thinking too that I wasn't expecting to be working in this way at this stage in my life. I mean, I'm not some really old guy, but I'm old enough and I've been kicking around for a long time. And part of me is, in a sense, furious that I am becoming an activist again at this stage and spending a lot of time and a lot of energy responding to what's going on in the world, whether it's the climate crisis, whether it's being an Albertan with this government and really struggling with their approach to governance, if you will. How can I activate and maybe motivate other people to get on board, not only just members of the Red Deer Puppetry Collective, but let's say the audience and citizens of the province, because again, all of this moves towards uh, becoming activated. I sure hope that when people watch these films, they get motivated, they get excited, Maybe they learn a little bit, but I just say we have to wake up as a citizenry and as a population. And that's why I'm doing it. I feel like fantastically excited about this process and about this next, let's say, stage of my career and pulling together, if you will, the activism and the, the visual arts and the performing arts and the writing, etc and creating this marriage of them. And isn't that funny? It feels like a mission. There you go.